Hey guys, can you see me? Probably not. A deer hit me. And no, I didn't hit him. I was minding my own business, doing 40 miles an hour, driving like a normal person, and boom, there he is. Let me tell you about it. Just cannot I, I just absolutely cannot believe this so um, I actually get off a little early from work um, Saturday night which is actually Sunday morning and I'm so happy because my knees are were just it was the weirdest thing my knees haven't hurt like that at work in a long time I mean to the point that they were just and they didn't really hurt they were just so stiff and I couldn't understand why they were so stiff because I had been doing everything I had normally been doing. I hadn't been doing anything I wasn't supposed to be doing. So finally, I decided I was just going to go home early because they just weren't loosening up. So I, I leave Amazon at 3 o'clock. I say about 3.20. And I'm I'm probably doing 40 miles an hour, and it's a there it's a two lane road, you know, one lane going one way, one lane going the other way. And part of the reason why I started leaving at four o'clock every morning was because there was so much commuter traffic coming at me, while there was never anybody behind me, and never anybody in front of me. And yes, I'm sure you see cigarette smoke. I just don't even want to. I don't even want to go there. Okay, just don't want to go there. Um. And so there was there was nobody on the road. And it was perfect. It was a nice, relaxing drive home. And out of the blue, something hit my truck. I mean, it was a boom. And the truck went. But it never pushed me on the road. And it never made me lose um, uh, control. Whatever it was, and I know now it was a deer. The truck absorbed the impact so much that the truck never wavered from between the two lines. I mean, it just stayed its course, and the truck probably said, well, what the fuck was that? And I'm thinking, okay, I probably should pull over and have a look at it. Um, um, I got down to a convenience store about five minutes away because the truck was still driving, which surprised me, but I thought I still need to get out and see what it was because when I had the impact, I looked in the rearview mirror and I didn't see anything, but it was pitch black back there as well. So let me show you um, what the truck looks like. Hold on. Okay. Look at this. I mean, just just look at this. And I, I actually drove home, and I'll tell you the reason why I end up driving this truck home as opposed to having it towed when I get back in the truck. But the entire fender is gone. And this is, I'm not really sure what this is, but it was laying on the wheel, but it wasn't impeding the wheel. And you know what? My wheel did not go flat either. I lost. Oh my God, I think I lost three lights. A headlight, a... um. I think you call it a fog light and a signal light. Now, one time when I was at work, I uh, started the truck because it was time to go home and my light blew and it was raining. And I thought, well, maybe I can get home. So I tried to get home and I got about a block and a half and I couldn't see nothing. So I turned around and I ended up sleeping in an Amazon parking lot that night. And then the next morning I drove to my garage in the next town. Because it wasn't raining, the lights that I had left actually got me home safely. Um, they, those three lights right there got me all the way home, which was probably another 20 minutes from where I was um, when um, all this happened. And let me show you what the other side looks like. This is what the other side of the truck looks like. So you can get an idea of, you know, I think this was pretty bad. Okay, so um, I'm going to run out of UPT time. Now, the time that the headlight didn't work, I slept in the parking lot and it was at the end of my shift, so I didn't have to use any time. And um, 
I, I slept in the parking lot for a couple of hours and then I headed to the town I used to live in because my garage opens at 9 a.m. Um, and I, they were able to take care of the, the headlight. And there was a water pump problem because my heat had also stopped working. So that cost me like $400, okay? And then um, what happened Sunday? Sunday, um, all the antifreeze leaked out of my car. And when I pulled into my Amazon parking spot at work, um, the car overheated. And so I realized, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to drive this home. So I, you know, I had started leaving an hour early and I was, you know, chipping slowly away at some of my accumulated vacation time. Because who's going on vacation? So you might as well use it for something, you know, that, that you need to use it for. And so because I was already scheduled to get off um, an hour, I was concerned about what, how serious this problem was and whether or not my garage was able going to be able to finish the job when I took it that morning or were they going to have to keep it overnight and I was worried about using time so because I already had one hour to get off early what they and I had what we did was went ahead and um I had an hour to get off the next day early as well what we did was we added nine hours to the next day's one hour early off to make it a full shift in case they had to keep the car and that was just the most wonderful thing for HR to do okay so when I had the tow thing and what I did was I actually got my top two toenails uh, the top the, the main toenails partially removed because I told you I wasn't used to wearing tennis shoes and um, some kind of way my toe top my big toes got fungus in the toenail for me wearing tennis shoes 10 12 hours a day okay and instead of my toenails growing out it just started stacking on top of each other to the point that it was pushing up against the top of my boots um, and it, I couldn't wear my boot for more than three hours at a time so we got I got that taken care of and I had asked them in advance what the procedure was like would, would I be able to go back to work that evening and they said, well, each person is different, so we won't know. And I didn't want to um, take a vacation day because I didn't know at that time that if you took vacation and then didn't use it, they would, they would grant it back to you. I didn't know that at the time, so I didn't want to take a chance of taking a vacation day just to lose it. So I didn't. And then they tell me once I get there and once I get through the procedure, um, that I could go to work if I wanted to, but I had to wear an open toe shoe for the next 24 hours. So needless to say, I couldn't go to work, and I had to use 10 hours of un UPT unpaid time. I only had 30 to begin with, so 10's already gone, okay? Um, and I'm going to have to use another 10 tonight, because... When, when I called the insurance company, and the reason why I drove this truck home instead of having it towed is because I called the insurance company, and they left me on hold for 25 minutes. It turns out that the department I was calling, which was the claims department, was having a system, I don't know, some kind of system shutdown maintenance thing. And so it took them that long to answer the phone. And when they did answer the phone, they couldn't help me with anything because they couldn't see inside the, the computers and they couldn't look at my my um, my policy to see what I qualified for. So at that point, I'm like, I'm not going to wait an, an, an hour for a tow truck. I said, I'm going to baby it and I'm taking this thing home. And, and that's what I did. I drove it home. And like I said, there's no traffic ever behind me or in front of me when I leave early. So I was able to do 25 miles an hour and not be in anybody's way. So this morning, because they told me I had to call back to actually make that claim and to find out what my policy covered. So, you know, I slept a couple of hours and then I think I called them back, I guess about 930. And it turns out that one, I do have rental insurance. So I, I do get a rental car. Um, and something else that I... Oh, I, you know what? For, for, I don't know why I thought my deductible was $500, but my deductible is actually 250 And I kind of wonder why my insurance was so high, 
But by the same token, insurance is always high. So now I understand why my insurance is so high. But thank God for that, because all this is only going to cost me $250. And you saw what the truck looked like. Now, I may have to put a deposit, you know, for the rental car, and that's fine. Um, but we made all these arrangements. They're going to pick the truck up Monday morning, which is tomorrow, because today is Sunday, and take it to the collision center. Um, and they had arranged for me to get a rental car today. And um, my reservation was 12 o'clock. That way I could go to work tonight and I could get the rental car and transfer all of my crap. Because, you know, I got my cleaning stuff back there in the, in the um, cargo area. I could transfer all my crap to the rental car um, before the tow truck came on Monday. Well, this, the agent inadvertently made me a reservation with an enterprise that is closed on Sundays. So when I called at quarter to 12, just to make sure everything was okay, and just to make sure they knew they needed to pick me up, because my car is out of commission, and I don't have anybody to take me to the um, the car to them. So they, do, they would need to pick me up, and that's kind of their thing. They were closed. So now I have to call the insurance company back again and they're scrambling to try to find another rental agency in my area that will that's open all the enterprises around my area are closed on Sundays the only two that they could find um, that wasn't closed on Sundays but closed at 2 o'clock now mind you it's probably 1230 about now okay refuse to come get me because I'm like an hour and a half away from them and I can't say I blame them. And there was no way I could get to them before they closed. So now we have to wait until Monday for me to get a rental car. But that also means I can't get to work. My daughter lives an hour away. Okay, by the time she get her and a baby ready, it'd be, it'd be two hours before she get here. And then she would have to come and pick me back up and she has to be to work at 7 herself at her doctor's office. I called the cab company. I'm surprised we even had a cab company. But we do. It was $37 each way to get back and forwards to Amazon if I caught a cab. So we're talking close to $80. Now, I'm not going to lie to you all right now. Financially, I'm in a great spot. You know, I don't have a problem paying $80, but I do have a problem paying $80 to go to Amazon when I probably might not even make that. Well, okay, I probably wouldn't make more than that, but you understand what I'm saying. $80 just to save a UPT day, and it'd be just my luck that something else come up and I have to use that damn day anyway. I, I just couldn't bring myself to spend $80 to go to Amazon and come back in a cab. So at this point, I'm going to have to use yet another UPT day because when I contacted HR, the last time I was able to talk to them in person at Amazon and we could work something out. This time I contacted them through A to Z and they weren't trying to work nothing out. So I have no choice but to use another UPT day. And I'm getting really it's close. I'm getting really close. I'm sorry, that's my alarm to let me know I need to be walking out the house to get in the truck to go to work. Um, I'm coming really close to running out of UPT. Just really close. So, yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, you, you add all the car issues I've had in the last maybe six weeks. Um... That cost me quite a bit of money. And the truck has never really cost me too much. Other than when I first got it. And sometimes it's like that. But I haven't had any problems with it really. You know. Um, my, my phone service has always been sketchy at the new place. To the point that was the reason why I got internet only throughout the house. Because the internet on my phone didn't work that well. Um, I could make phone calls but the internet didn't work. Well, probably starting to last two weeks, I drop calls. I mean, I cannot have a phone conversation more than two minutes in my house before I drop the call. So all this stuff I had to do with the insurance company had to be done outside in the parking lot. There was one parking space in front of my house, 
okay, um, that will give me three bars. Otherwise, I have to drive to the other end of the parking lot to get three bars. And I found out that T-Mobile bought Sprint. But then Sprint turned around and is merging with um, Straight Talk, which is the service I've had forever. And I really like the service. I've never had any problems with it. It even goes to places I go when I go camping. Never had a problem with it. Now I can't even carry on the conversation in my house. And they said that service would be slightly interrupted until the whole process was done. And I, I'm wondering, now how long is that going to be? Because I can't sit out in my truck every time I want to make a phone call. Now, I can make phone calls anywhere else, but where my apartment is, it's, in the, it's at the very back of the whole complex. And it's like 100 feet outside of Straight Talk's comfort zone. So, it's just been a hell of a couple of months. A hell of a couple of months. And my sister said, is it totaled? I said, no, it's not even totaled. I can't even buy a new one. But I love my Jeep. And so, but it's just a lot. So anyway, guys, I just thought I'd share it with you. And yeah, and I'll let you know how it goes. Um, I'll talk to y'all later. I'm not depressed. I'm just frustrated. And um, I like my job at Amazon. And I guess whatever happens is supposed to happen, you know. And my sister said, you're not going to get fired. She goes, even if you run out of time, they're going to work with you. Yeah, maybe they will and maybe they won't, you know. Um, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It's Amazon's funny like that. So, yeah, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.